Crickin for the buzz, the show where we rank things, jerseys, teams, players. It's a game-changing show. You know, there are after we rank things, people take it so seriously that teams change their names, players change their games, viewers change their web browser, so they don't get any other videos recommended based on this video. At times, anyway. we are forced to change our handles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a game-changing show. <laughs> And today we're going to do something game changing, which is we're going to rank the best test fast bowlers of the 21st century. This is only bowlers who have debuted in the year 2000 and after that. So not players whose uh, careers have spanned through the 90s and the 2000s, but specifically in the 21st century, we're going to rank the best eight test fast bowlers. So only test match cricket. I've got Vishal Dixit, Yash Jan, George Benoit with me to... Uh, have this discussion and rank these guys. You'll see who they are from their descriptions that will come in the nameplates. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go with the first bowler. The first one we're going to rank is Jaspreet Bumrah. So I'll start with George. George, where would you have Bumrah in the top eight? Hmm. Uh, I'm going to put him at number five. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Slow. <laughs> I'll put him a couple of places above that. Number three. I would also have him in the top three. I agree with. You guys. He's, he's, just, he's number three. He has 159 wickets in 36 tests. But yeah, he's and, an amazing bowler. I'm, as you know, good in all conditions, in all situations. But I just don't think he has the body of work yet. The longevity. Josh, what are your reasons for him? 159 in the top wickets. There are a total of uh, 121 bowlers who've taken 150 test wickets. Only two have a better average. Than average him. of 20. Yes, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Only four have a better strike rate than him. So early in his career, relatively speaking, he already has five firsts around the world, almost all of them in winning causes. In his first year alone, he won India Test Match in Joburg, in Melbourne and in Nottingham. Uh, when England were here earlier this year, at home, he's equally menacing, if not more. So if he didn't play another Test Match, you would still have him in your <laughs> top three bowlers in, of the 20th century? 21st in, century? Of the 21st century, he'd definitely be top five, but I'm quite sure... He will play more test matches and I'm willing to bet he'll go even further up than number three. That's the tricky thing when you compare somebody who's played uh, a few years of test cricket, 20 or 40 test matches with somebody who's played 100 or 120. Yeah. That they have, the other bowlers who played a lot more have had chances to fail also a lot more, not just succeed, which Bumrah has not had yet. Should we stick him at number three for now? I think Vishal, Yash and I all had him at number three. George can make arguments later <laughs> based on who he thinks should be above Bumrah. Yeah. The next guy I've got. A guy who is very often synonymous with Bumrah, Pat Cummins. Mm. Because, you know, similar, they started off, actually Cummins started off before, but then had a restart to his career later. And they're of a similar age as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Vishal, where would you have Cummins? Just above or below Bumrah is the question for me, number four. Okay. I'm at five. Okay. I would have had him at three. Had three ahead but, of Bumrah. Uh, so why Cummins ahead of Bumrah? Just because he has a uh, hundred more wickets than Bumrah. Uh, so he's, I think, achieved more at this point in his career than Bumrah has. And his average is, yeah, 22 compared to Bumrah's 20. But uh, I think a hundred more wickets at this point makes him a more complete bowler. hundred more wickets in right. approx, how many matches do we know? 26 because more matches. 26 more matches. Yeah, that's okay. not bad. Okay. Bumrah yeah. is 159 in 36 yeah. tests. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cummins is 262 in 62 tests. And he's that kind of bowler who even in a good Australian attack, against the hardest opposition, like when in Australia play India, that's probably the hardest opposition. And that's where you see Cummins is like a level above Hazelwood and Stark, yeah. Stark and these other sure. really yeah. good bowlers. And that can, that's kind of where you see where his level is at. In a funny way, it's the reverse of that which makes Bumrah just that little bit ahead for me. The fact that Bumrah has, it's rare for Indian cricket to have had a phase of 5-6 years where India have always had a stacked bowling attack. Hmm. Bumrah has never got that luxury to bowl in a bowling attack where he can run through teams. I think three of us have comments just below Bumrah. Oh, Yash, you had him at 5. I had him but at I think 5. Maybe we'll start are... him off at number 4. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see who else Yash had above him. George, for the moment at least, has lost that argument. Now we <laughs> no have one that... Uh... Clearly you won't start with him now. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm going to start with George on this because this is a guy who, when I said he's in the top eight, George's immediate reaction was what? And that's Mohammed Asif. Only 23 tests, George. But just hear me out, okay? This is why I put Asif here. Because I was watching videos of batters talking about Mohammed Asif. A.B. De Villiers, who I think we'd all agree is like the best batter probably of this century. 
he was asked who who's the one bowler you would have bowl for your life and this is the guy he picked mohammad asif because he said that skill level wise this guy is the best bowler that he's ever seen <laughs> yeah like asif had extraordinary skill for sure huh. but his career ended because uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we are not. But we are not ranking these people based on like integrity. personality or an integrity. So, so are we this only purely bowling? Uh, yeah, on just potential or talent, then sure. Like uh, you know, Shane Bond would rank amongst one of the great bowlers that ever played uh, them. Yeah. But uh, well. I cannot rank Asif in the no. top eight. I'm sorry, but <laughs> going by skill, I mentioned Zahir Khan. He may not be yeah, yeah, as yeah. good as Cummins or James Anderson, maybe. When their career so, ended, Bond so I'm is the put one. Him as eight, Bond yeah. is the one I thought of. I think you were going to say nine, but there, there's only space. For there it. are, by the way, there are going to be wild card picks at the end of this, yeah. which could replace the top eight. And I think George is waiting for that moment where he can replace Asif. But Asif had this ability to make batters look yeah. silly. Yeah, he like, had the ability know, to yeah. almost curve the ball one way in the air, and then it would seem and the other seen, way off yeah. the pitch, yeah. which and was in. Like this, Mix of yeah, yeah. yeah. And the one game. that stands out in memory, I'm sure to all of us, yeah. the one he bowled to VVS Lakshman. Yeah. I haven't seen Lakshman that shock yeah. facing a single yeah. ball in his career. His reaction is also as memorable as yeah. the ball. The funniest thing about that Lakshman decision is that Ramiz Raja was so confused he called it an inside edge because he didn't <laughs> think the ball could swing so much. He's like inside edge onto the stumps. I think that that's so. A good I would have put uh, Asif at one. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah right. George is saying eight. No, I I actually would have him as high as five because I think he was that good. But it looks like yeah. everyone's going by, you know, the boring stats. He's not played enough. <laughs> so, Yash, at least we're number not, seven. Yeah. I mean, we're not oh, ranking okay. purely by skill and ability. So, this is a very relative list. Yeah, yeah, so, he will go down seven. eventually. So, okay, let's put him at seven for now. Let's at least not start him at eight. Let's go with somebody who's in some ways the opposite of Asif. In the sense, <laughs> maybe not had... <laughs> maybe doesn't have the wow factor, but definitely has the number of test yes. wickets. And has some wow factor. Although he was... That wow factor was mostly about Ben Stokes' catch. But anyway, uh, Stuart Broad. Vishal, I'll start with you. Where would you have him? Number six. Yeah. Okay. A number he... Okay. Has a bigger association with his career. Yeah, number six. George, would you have him six any higher? Or? No, six is good for now. When he was yeah. running hot, there aren't that many bowlers yeah. who have done that the damage of, that he's that done. Eight for fifteen, yeah. Yeah. On yeah. That day. doing five but, for zero. I think it yeah. was in South Africa. And he had hat tricks as well. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. argument against him would be in places like Australia, India. He didn't have yeah. the same yes, kind absolutely. of success. Yeah. Largely he's not came done as well. That's why yeah. he's not higher up the list. So. That's four sixes for Broad. We leave the other two for Yuvraj. Uh, <laughs> he goes there. Uh, then we have his, I mean, the guy who's synonymous with him, which is Jimmy Anderson. Uh, okay, now I think the question is one or two, surely, for Anderson. George, two. I'll start with you. Two. two. Okay, everybody says number two. So I have a uh, distinct number one. If James one. Anderson is watching, he must be wondering. Okay, let's, let's just put one. him at two and then let's, because I think the guy who we all have at number one is next and then we'll discuss why this you is one. You can put it already. So, Vishal? Stain, yes. no. <laughs> So, no, Stain no, is the next name, not, Dale Stain. Yes. Everyone says number, number one. one. Number one. Yes. Now, let's... Okay, so, let me make yeah, the argument for Anderson be being stable, above yeah. Stain, okay? Even though, actually, this is what I would also have. But I think Anderson, of course, not great numbers in Australia, which counts against him. In England, everybody knows about his... I mean, his record there. One of the things that stood out about him is actually in India. I think he's been... Had, like... Yeah. His... He's shown his skill level there with his reverse swing, even on the last two, even on the last two tours, where he was actually England's best bowler, like even pushing 40. When we are considering that one versus two, the major differentiator to me is when you look at overall away numbers. Mm. Both of them yeah. played a lot of tests. Jimmy Anderson averaged nearly 30 in away and neutral tests. Dale Stain still averaged, what was it, 25, 24.9 in yeah. away tests. And when we talk about uh, impact on away tours, Dale Stain, what he's done in Australia, what he's done in, in India, India. Yeah. yeah, twice India. over in India. In India, twice. he's actually bowled on two separate tours. Yeah. Yes, two yeah. separate tours where South Africa ended up drawing the series, which yeah. hasn't happened too much in the 21st century for any team. And those wins are primarily down to him bowling India out on day one in Ahmedabad, and then Nagpur, which is a river swinging masterclass of all time. Plus, yeah, uh, as you say, and Stain. The outswing, the reverse swing, the seam. With the old ball. And at much higher pace than most of. Yeah, and the players. celebration. Yeah, one thing also yeah. about home and away is that a lot of fast bowlers get a lot of success away as well. Like South African fast bowlers can get a lot of success in Australia. That is why we were comparing their numbers in India specifically, mm -hmm. which is a very different factor and guess, I guess gets more weightage also. That if 
these kind of fast bowlers have not grown up in Asia, get a lot of wickets in India, then it's a different story altogether. Yeah. Who would Virat Kohli rather play? That's the question. We are also just agreeing too much on this. Now we need, <laughs> yeah. we need to start having some more debates. The next name I have, also a South African, Kahiso Rabada. Uh, amazing numbers at home. Decent numbers in some places away. Not great in Asia, for example. Yes. But his, his record at home is just outstanding. I think Yash will tell us is about his strike rate, which is one of the best in history, right? Yeah, yes. I mean, if you're talking specifically at home, he averages 19. 19. He has a strike rate of 33. And we're talking what? We're talking 184 wickets in 33 tests. That's a large so enough sample. He's on 299 test wickets. Correct. If he gets his 300 relatively quickly, yeah. he's going to get there at a better strike rate than Dale's. Australia, he averages 26. England, 26. New Zealand, 29. Yep. Uh, so, I, so I would have had Rabada in the top four. at four with Cummins at three and Bumrah at five. And yeah. that strike rate yeah, so. and those numbers with the red ball, he's maintaining in a T20 era, which Dale yeah. Stain and James Anderson didn't have to do when they were young, especially in the first 10 years of their career. I think the question is four or five. Uh, I would say five. Okay, so we have two five. Because he, has, he doesn't have that many more wickets than uh, Cummins, Cummins and Cummins has a better subcontinent. In Asia, uh, yeah. Cummins is much better. So, there's three people there. So, we're not shifting anybody around. Instead, we have Rabada. Rabada has three five. five fours now. How do... Yeah. yeah. George does not. And now we have no petitioning for Cummins to move up to three then. And Bumrah down to five, which is George's origin. <laughs> <laughs> no. And then Who's finally right? we have Trent Bolt. Yeah, we only eight. have number eight left yeah. for him. Is that where he should go? No, for? no. I mean, still, he needs to go above Asif for sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, the man is 300 and some wickets. Uh, what are the, uh, what are the, why would Bolt Yash not be in the top? Five, for example. This is a similar skew to what we've discussed with some of the others. You look at some of the his numbers in New Zealand and compare it to the rest similar of the to Stuart Broad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vishal, what is? But what are the, like the things that have got him in the top eight? The uh, one is uh, the number of wickets, the longevity, mm -hmm. and uh, but somehow I'm more inclined to say what has not worked for him because what the top four have. Huh. I don't think Trent Bolt has. Trent Bolt has picked up a lot of those 300 odd wickets in New Zealand and in England, where he can yeah, certainly yeah. swing the ball yeah. more than yeah. anybody on his day. And there's a clear. And uh, in, even in Australia, he's not picked up yeah, as many wickets. True. Or that's even true. in South Africa, he's, his average is not that great. You know, there's, I see no way he survives. What this about list? seven? No, no, <laughs> like, like, uh, there's no way. What about he, seven? Anyone says he should go ahead of Asif? I know George yes. says that. Huh? Anyone yeah. else? I mean, seven is for Dhoni, but he can go there. Yash, I mean, consensus now. Well, not in terms of skill level, but in terms of Actually, it would be a tie because I stand on Asif at 7. I, I would have Asif at 3, but but so I, I'm not even part yeah, look, of this discussion. Uh, <laughs> let, let's face it, uh, Dustin, both of them are going out of this top 8 very soon. Well, let's see, we've got wildcard okay. picks now. I'm okay. going to start with uh, Vishal's wildcard pick. Vishal, who do you have a wildcard and tell me right. where they should go and who they should replace. Any guesses? I know who it is, so the rest oh, can guess. Any guesses? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Mitch Stark. It's Mitch Stark. Yeah. So, okay, they so, stay. <laughs> apart from one or two countries, Stark has a better record in Asia as well. In India, yeah. he's not done that well. In Sri Lanka, he's done much better. Yeah, but Stark there, has there, all been part of this big great asterisk. attack. There's a big asterisk to me about Stark's Asia numbers. I yeah. know the overall looks better than a lot of the others. But there's one particular series against a Sri very Lanka. hapless Sri Lanka in 2016, yeah. where he took 24 wickets at 15. You remove that series and he averages 43.5 yeah. in Asia. But you know, you <laughs> he played all those matches, even the last tour yeah. in Sri Lanka when uh, Cam Green and all played. They play a lot of those test matches in Gaul, which is not known for fast bowlers. So if he yeah, is picking wickets there, you yeah, but Stan got blame. wickets in Ahmedabad. Also Stan not known for fast bowlers. I, I, I don't think we're looking at the top six. I'm comparing with number seven and eight, not with Stan, Anderson and all those people. I definitely see your number 8 going, the number 7 going as well because I have Vernon Philander uh, who finished uh, with 224 wickets at an average of 22 and a strike rate of 50. Asia is the dampener, uh, 10 matches, 16 wickets, average of 38. But to average 22 over the course of a 60 plus test career, to me so, he's there. But he didn't have pace. That's the thing. Like when we talk about fast bowlers, like we want guys who have some pace. That's man. the real thrill. Yeah, that's that the thrill. Should have, you should have informed us about that in the notes. <laughs> no, he's written quicks. 
Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, no, actually, Yash wrote that. So, anyway. who, so who would you bring him in for? Yeah. Asif. He's ahead of both Bolt uh, and Asif. Bolt? And Stark. Okay. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Stark, I'm not considered. <laughs> yeah. You have to. Okay, I'll do mine next. Mine, I'm sure no one's going to consider, but I just wanted to mention him because he's Ryan Harris. Now, this is my argument for Ryan Harris. He only played some 20 something tests, but. He was, he was obviously had a whole lot of injury issues, but this was the guy who whenever England had an, imp Australia rather had an important test, they would play this guy. Like most of the tests he played were against England uh, and yeah. India. And his average is like 21 or 22. He has the best Ashes average of every bowler who's taken more than 50 Ashes wickets since like the 1980s. He has a better Ashes average than Magra. And you just think of some of the balls he bowled, like that ball to Alistair Cook, which just missed the crack yeah. and hit the stump. That was, by the way, Cricket Four's ball of the century. Okay, this guy was unplayable on his day. He didn't have many days it was to be unplayable. Of the innings, of the innings yeah. I think. But this guy, I just felt he needed a mention at least. I just wanted to mention him. I know he probably doesn't beat anyone in the top eight, so I'll just put him here. Did he have the pace? He <laughs> had decent pace on his day, considering his injury issues. Stop anyway. On, George. George. Oh, wait. Okay, let's do George's and then we'll talk about who deserves a place in the top. Which hallowed fast bowling country is missing and not even had a mention in this discussion? George, we all know you support Bangladesh, but like, let's get serious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, this guy has 273 wickets from about 82 matches he and an rich. average very close to Stark, Broad, yes. and all he of that. And I just wanted to mention, yeah, we haven't brought up a single West Indian in this conversation. He has it's done this uh, because of that second line, 21st century. Yes, but, uh, yeah. he has done this in the 2000s, playing in a very weak test team, playing at home yeah. uh, on pitches. Now the pitches in the West Indies are back to being, you know, fast bowler friendly. But for a large part of the 2000s, uh, when he played, they were really slow wickets. So, yeah, he's, I think, done phenomenally well. Mm. Okay, so let's say I, I vote honestly from the wild card. I think that Philander can replace maybe Bolt. And then we shift Asif to one and <laughs> shift everybody else one down. Or we shift maybe uh, uh, Asif to seven, Philander to eight. Or what does everybody else feel? I think we can I don't think George wants Asif in the top eight. Okay, who all want Asif out? I'll be fair now. I, I won't like just monopolize things and put him in the top eight. Yeah, looking at these options, we uh, have at okay. least two of them that need to be taken seriously to replace Asif. So, okay, I so want fine. To Pakistan right, fans, let it be known. It was these no, other Stark Indians okay. who removed <laughs> Asif. So, in this case, and then, so, yeah. And now, does Stark come in place of Bolt? Or are we okay with Bolt here? And No, I'd have Bolt in there ahead of Stark. I would also kind of have Bolt, honestly. Also, New Zealand have had such good pacers. I feel like they need at least one representative. Honestly, two Aussies who are in our wild cards. I'd actually have one above them, which is Josh Hazelwood, because I think he's a lot more consistent. That is true. Okay, so fine. Come We've on. settled on this top eight. Dale Stain is the best fast bowler of the 21st century, if you, if you care about our opinion at all. And then you've got the other seven. And these four wildcards also are all great, especially Mohamed Asif. <laughs> and Kima <Kimaru. laughs> That's a wrap for the buzz.